YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL questions from subscribers a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to and we answer it in a video just like this if you want to be part of it you can send me an email to team keep it clean at gmail.com or for the patrons you can send it directly on patreon and if you want to become a team keep it clean patron you can go to patreon.com slash engraving vids and if you don't want to become a team keep it clean patron just stay right where you at i love y'all team keep it clean i appreciate y'all uh today is game day ravens versus washington football team I almost slipped up and called them their previous name but that's not that's their previous name it's not their current name i mean they don't even have a current name yet but anyway in this episode, we got a very special guest. Without further ado, let's bring him in. So you two, team, keep it clean. This has been a, a long time coming because I've been trying to make this happen for a minute. Uh, and now our schedules, they align. So we could bring you our guy, Jason, from Huddle Up Films. And welcome to the channel. Appreciate you coming on. And let's, why, why do you do YouTube? Just to jump straight into it. Why do you do YouTube? What, what made you want to do it? Well, it's it's for the love of it, and it's for the betterment of myself, actually. So I want to give back to people. I had an unfortunate accident in 2015, had a lot of things taken away from me, and I had a lot of time to myself. So, you know, with, I've been in football for a while studying it. I, actually, the first draft was the 98 draft when we passed on Randy Moss and, dra and drafted Dwayne Starks. So I guess it worked out well. We won a Super Bowl with Dwayne Starks, who had mm -hmm. an interception. But um, just to give you a background, I've been around for a long time, but – Finally, last year, I got the courage to come out and just publish my stuff for the people, for the Ravens flock, whether they liked it or not. It wasn't to make it big or be a content creator. So mm -hmm. I followed you guys for a while. You might see me comment down below. Uh, most of the time, I just like the video and somebody's already commented what I wanted to say. But <laughs> love, love team. Keep it clean. And I'm glad to glad to be on. Thank you. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. I appreciate you. Now, um, with with, with what you do. Uh, with you breaking down film, what's, pro what's probably your favorite part about breaking down film? The defense, and also uh, mm. it passes the time for me when I'm up at night. Uh, I have a hard time sleeping. So being able mm. to watch the All-22 and find out the why of each play that you can't see on TV, it's like, uh, okay, well, this guy did this because this guy did that, and he did that because the coverage was this, and then this guy did that. Like watching it all develop, it's like a mm. mix of art and math that I, I can't quite explain to you, but you, you learn so much by being able to see the way the safeties move and how the defense rotates and, and all mm -hmm. that stuff. And, you know, you watch it enough and you know what should happen and you can tell who's really going above and beyond and making a play. So I like to highlight, I keep it mostly positive on my channel mm -hmm. uh, and just highlight the things that each player does because whether people think they're a good player or a bad player, there are things that they do that are amazing. Right. Okay. And, and yeah, that makes sense because, uh, not every player, not what they do is going to show up in the stat sheet. Uh, so that's why I definitely appreciate uh, the, you guys like you, the film guys that really can break stuff down on another level that a lot of us who are more so the fan guys, stuff that we might not see or we might not catch. Um, now, something that you talked about uh, with how you like to give back. Um, yes. I noticed and I know a lot of team keep it clean been seeing it too with how you've been working with like literally everybody uh that people on raven's twitter people on raven's youtube just everybody um and, and what made like even guys that don't even do videos even some guys that might be writers some guys that may just do fantasy football some guys that do have podcasts uh but just you've been working with everybody um talk about what made you like i know you talked about it briefly but with giving back uh to the raven's community why? Why so much and, and on that level and, and reaching out to literally like everybody? Yeah, it was it was a joy. I mean, part of it was it being my first full off season and, you know, not having film. I watched enough of it. But the other thing is I see a lot of bickering back and forth and I see mm -hmm. a lot of people who are protective over their brand and. You know, I just wanted to open it up. I want to be that guy in the community who just works with everybody, gives back. I'm not defensive, mm -hmm. defensive. Over. I just want to hear everybody's point of view, bring them together on one channel. So having you on and, and you know, the other YouTubers out there, it's just a blessing, man. I, I'm just trying to make the most out of it and, uh, you know, build us as a family. My thing is football is family. You see me right. type it all the time. And mm -hmm. and that's not just like a slogan or, or a cliche. That's 
that's the way I, I feel. And, and same thing on Twitter. I don't care how many followers you have. I'm going to treat your comment with just as much as uh, mm -hmm. respect as if it's in Gravens or anybody else's. So I appreciate you highlighting that. It was a lot of fun. I think I did 20 some interviews in 20 some days <laughs> from people from all over the place talking about whatever yeah. they wanted. So, and uh, also on my channel, I just wanted to mention no matter what level of football your fan you are, there's something there for you. If you want to see like Bateman run all different kinds of routes organized, it's over there. If you want to see Patrick Ricard blocking people and dominating people, it's there. Uh, highlights, just all kinds of stuff. So I just try to keep an open mind there and do different stuff. But I love having the guests on. Like that's something I'm going to continue to do. Cool, man. Sounds good. And where can people find you at your YouTube channel and your Twitter? YouTube and Twitter, Huddle It Up Films. So it's just simple for both. It should be easy to find me. Just remember the it, uh, Huddle It Up. It's a shout out to actually one of my JV quarterbacks who used to say Huddle It Up. And I used to give him the dirty look. It was like a running joke. Like, man, you're supposed to say Huddle Up. Just say Huddle Up. It ain't, you don't need the it. So I, I used the Huddle It Up Films as a shout out to my old quarterback, Ralph Brooks. If you're still out there, Ralph, hey, what's up, man? Huddle It Up. I appreciate that. All right. So without further ado, we got some good questions as always. So let's get into it. First question came from my guy, Cody T. He said, what's good, my man? Been watching videos for a good while now. I love what you're doing. Nobody really breaks down teams like you do, man. I don't know about that part. I think some people actually break it down even better. But anyway, I appreciate it. He said, but one thing that kind of has me confused, as of right now, with everyone healthy, we have a team with minimal weaknesses. Uh, we had a good draft and a good free agency as well, but I see us pursuing guys in positions that we have already stacked. I'm confident in our team, but I feel like we're being over, I feel like being oversaturated could be a big problem. Uh, sorry for the long message, but do you agree or disagree? Um, I would say I disagree because right now is the time to be oversaturated because they have to go um, I mean, they've already done two cut downs. They went from 90 men to 85 men and then from 85 men to 80 men. And then the big cut down is going to be next week when they have to go from 80 men to a 53 man roster. So they're not going to be able to be uh, oversaturated or whatnot. This is the time where they have to have as many guys on their roster that they can possibly have. Um, so, no, I, I don't think they're oversaturated right now. What about you? Huddle it up. Yes, I, I think that uh, you'd never hurt to do your homework and to bring guys in. And you never really know what's happening behind the scenes. So I, I, tend, I tend to think that if I hear something and there's legitimate uh, reason for it, a.k.a. maybe one of our players are hurting, one of our players are struggling, and we don't know about it. So we can only judge by what we see on TV, which quite frankly is – a really small picture of what really happens around the building. So right. I, I like having a GM that really comes through, does his own work, and is willing to turn over every stone because, like you said, Engraven, when these 53 gets cut down, there's going to be some good players that could help us out there. And if uh, it works out and there could be uh, a Raven or fill a role that we need, that would be great. So not not concerned about that, but I understand you want to get your young guys reps, which is probably where you're – uh, where the question comes from. Next question came from my guy, Jeremiah S. He said, now that Tyler Huntley has shown that he has a specific set of skills in his Liam Neeson voice, uh, do you think that he will be a trade prospect or someone that teams would actually start reaching out to uh, the Ravens to see if he's someone they're willing to part ways with? And if so, what team do you think is the best fit? I would like to see him on the Broncos. He would have weapons and a chance to shine. Mm, mm, mm. I um, I think that he could be uh next year, possibly even this year, but I think he could possibly be next year. Reason being, especially if Lamar Jackson continues to have the success that he's been having, uh, because it could show, and he's shown in the preseason like what he can do, and he showed a bit la last season too. Uh, but he would be so young, his contract would be so cheap, uh, and the upside is there. Um, and him having been around in Lamar Jackson and been in Raven system, and, and they've shown you like what these boys can do. Um, now, I, I think they still have opportunity to show even more of what these guys can do, but we'll see how the season goes. Uh, but I, I don't think this – well, my, maybe this year, but I think certainly uh, next year that is a uh, big possibility. And as a fan, like, you just – you want all the good players that are on your team. You want them to stay forever. Even the backup guys, you want them to stay forever. But as a man, and still as a fan too – you also want them to have the opportunity to grow and the opportunity to get their chance to shine. So um, 
if he did get traded somewhere, uh, I, I would want which team. I'm not sure. But as long as it was a team where he really had a legitimate opportunity to start, I, I couldn't be mad at it. How about you, Jason? Yeah, I, I couldn't be mad at it. I mean, if I was a, a Tyler Huntley family member or friend, you know, I would I would say that would be a great idea. But as a Ravens fan, I want Tyler Huntley on this team, especially yeah. for this year, because uh, if Lamar has to miss, I mean, ankles get sprained and graven. It don't have to be a season ender. Stuff happens. You know, people are going to get hurt. Uh, Lamar protects himself really well, so it's not yeah. a, it's not one of those things. Don't take, don't get me wrong. In fact, I, I did a video and a big study about how many times he gets hit. And he's he's safe in what he does. It's a lot safer than having people roll up on you in the pocket. But say Lamar sprains the ankle, gets bruised up, has to miss three games. We can plug Tyler Huntley in there, run pretty much the same offense. And the young man really showed me that he's ready to go in this league. Uh, I think another year of teasing under Lamar. Really will help do him well, and maybe set him up to where we uh, we can get something out of him, but not yet. Wait till he's, uh, you know three or four years in where we have to move on from him. I would say. Next question came from my guy Manuel. Shout out from Mexico. He said it. I was looking at your recent video where they suggested to bring KJ right, and I say no, not yet. The reason why is that we can make a move that no one could have expected, and it will work in ninety percent. Oh, I'm ninety percent sure of it. And that is to get Joe Nubo with his speed and intelligence, he can dominate the field. LOL, just kidding. <laughs> anyway, you said on a serious note, I think that we should give Cole Cap a chance in that position, uh, in that middle linebacker role, because he already knows the whole defensive wink, just like Chucky and the Joker do. And think about it. You have on the field three guys that are like coaches telling you exactly what to do in every play. And if push comes to shove, Cole Cap can land a harder hit. Stop and stop false King Henry uh, like the Joker did. I don't know about that part, but anyway, he said, what are your thoughts on it? Stay safe and tell team. Keep it clean to check on each other and especially on Mike and Ravens pride. Uh, both have to see Lamar retire those two numbers for sure, man. Um, so since this is an intricate part of the defense and you love defense and you are the film guy, I'm going to let you take this one. How would you feel about Anthony Levine, Cole Cap? being one of the uh, the replacements for LJ Fort as a linebacker. You know, it, it, whether you call him a safety or a linebacker, uh, you know, we're going to have safeties lined up at that linebacker spot in our dime defense. So usually that's Chuck Clark. Um, now, what I would tell the question, the, the, whoever submitted the question is that Chuck Clark and Deshaun Elliott play up towards the box when we go to three safeties. And Jimmy Smith was the guy who was playing in the back end. Mm. Uh, just keep in mind that last year, Cocat was on the team and we did not play a lot of dime defenses with three safeties. So that tells me that the coaches do not trust him in that role anymore, that he's more of a core special team guys. But mm. at the base of the question, I think it's right on. Like we're going to see more safeties in the box playing linebacker, especially with LJ Fort being hurt. That safety is just going to be Chuck Clark. And you're going to see guys like Brandon Stevens and Jimmy on the back end of those three safety sets. Next question came from a boy, Mike A. He said, good evening, Engraving. Hope you and your family are well. Love your YouTube channel. Appreciate it, Mike. He said, I had a question for you regarding Adafe Away. Do you know what the arm brace is that he wears on his left bicep? Just curious because I remember Ray and T-Sizzle wearing similar braces when they had their arm injuries. Uh, I think Adafe is going to be a great Raven, and I just hope he's not having issues with his arm. I noticed he wore it at Penn State as well. Um, I, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I honestly have no clue uh, what it is. Um, but if he if he did wear it at Penn State uh, and he's still wearing it with the Ravens, then I wouldn't have any crazy like concern with it. Uh, you got anything about that, Jason? Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't noticed it uh, I, as far as or anything like that. But, um, okay. you know, I do have a video on Adafi if anybody wants to watch all his snaps in that first preseason game. Uh, I just wanted to comment on the player, first of all, uh, in this question. I'm not worried about the arm brace because I haven't seen him favoring it or changing the way he plays. He plays hard. He hustles. He's going to make plays in this defense as he learns to become a better pass rusher and add moves to his repertoire. It's part of the reason I like the Justin Houston move a lot. Uh, from everything I've heard uh, around people around the team is that he's a very fast learner. The one thing I want to see Adafi do is get off the ball fast. 
He's the fastest all outside linebacker maybe in the history of football, and that's not an exaggeration. Uh, so challenge him. Get off the first step. Take a look to your left. Watch the ball. Get off the ball fast. He's going to make plays for this team. And uh, it's also somebody else who's going to make some plays for this team and who has been in the preseason is Dalen Hayes, and that actually leads to his next question. He said, also, I've been very impressed with Dalen Hayes. Do you foresee a time when Hayes will be a starting linebacker for the Ravens, or do you see him as a rotational piece? And thanks, and keep up the good work. Um, yeah. It all just depends on how the chips fall, uh, because right now, Tyus Bowser, for the next couple of years that, that they have him signed for, uh, it's looking like he's going to be the starter. And Adafi Away being their first-round draft pick, um, soon enough he's going to end up being a starter too because Justin Houston, we know Justin Houston is nice, love him this year, but he's not going to be a long-term solution uh, for the Ravens. Um, so Dalen Hayes, he's definitely going to have some opportunities to shine. Uh, how far and few those opportunities come, or how soon or how later they come, uh, that's – that's to be determined. But I think that uh, he definitely will get a chance, but it just – it all depends on when. Yeah, he's going to play uh, right away for us, and I think that it's important to remember that he his skills are that of Tyus Bowser's. So mm. when you're, you're talking about that pure Sam linebacker over the right tackle, if you can imagine that, a guy who drops into coverage a lot, Ty, Tyus Bowser dropped into coverage 155 times last year. So really all of the Ravens linebackers, outside linebackers, are rotational guys. You have McPhee. You have Justin Houston. They want to keep them fresh. So it's really going to be on the young guys and, and Jalen Ferguson here to play a lot of snaps, maybe fill in some special team snaps. But Dalen Hayes does something very, very well, and that's the ability to cover. He's shown that already. He started in college. So when Bowser's not in the lineup or when Bowser's taking a breather, Dalen Hayes is going to pick up that role, I, I would bet, from the first game. Next question came from my guy, Nicholas W. He said, do you think Jeremy Fowler actually had a point about Lamar Jackson being figured out this season? Just think about it this way. Uh, you give Lamar Jackson a bad offensive line, a center that struggles to snap, predictable play calling, and a below average receiving corp that can't catch. And yeah, Lamar has looked figured out, LOL. The same way Mahomes looked figured out in that Super Bowl with a bad offensive line, but he actually had good receivers, cough, cough. Uh, I just don't know why nobody else sees it that way. Uh, how many times have we seen great quarterbacks like Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, and now Mahomes get blown out in big games, but they were never, never, they were never labeled as figured out? But Lamar Jackson is. And for what? Over one pick six? Yeah, I'm sure those other quarterbacks have never done that before. <laughs> so... Um, that's how it's always going to be with Lamar, his entirety in the league. That's, that's, that's how it's going to be for the, his whole career. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. That's why I got to give a lot of credit to Lamar Jackson for how he handles everything. Cause you know, he hears it. He definitely hears it. Ravens hear it. We all hear it. Everybody hears it. Um, but the way that he responds to it, a lot of times it's not even responding to it, uh, verbally. Um, he just lets his game do the talking 99% of the time. Uh, and even like he was asked about it in a presser uh, from a few days ago. And he just said, oh, I, I doubt it. I doubt that they got me figured out. We just got to play football. And that was it. That was it. Yep. So um, he's he, he he lets his play do the talking, man. Um, So shout out to him for being able to um, the way that he handles all of this uh, nonstop because it's been happening ever even before he even came into the league. Even in at, at, even during the draft, they wanted him to change positions. They wanted him to run the forty, and 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 I think if he would have really ran that forty, that would have lowered the respect that teams had on him as a quarterback. Because a lot of teams obviously didn't even respect him as a quarterback. They wanted him to be a receiver, or something like that. So uh, he's been dealing with this forever now. So it's sad, but it seems like he he's used to it, and it's expected, uh, and it's not going anywhere. So. Yeah, Lamar's maturity level is is through the roof. Like, you know, I, I mentioned this the other day, you know, taking pictures with Bills fans after you were concussed and knocked out of the playoffs. I mean, that's the level of maturity. I, I Engraven, I think I said on Twitter, I've been more upset after softball games that I lost. Like, you know, I had I was kind of a, not a nice person for an hour or so. It took me a while to calm down. So, uh, you know, Machar, M Lamar's level of maturity is very impressive. You're not going to stop people from talking. And let's be serious. Lamar gets clicks. People see how divided they are on Lamar 
And they take advantage of that. I mean, Jeremy Fowler didn't even look like he had a straight face when he was saying what he was saying. It was almost like, I have to take this point of view and let Ryan Clark just hand it to me. But, um, you know, I try not to get on, on into that too much. I think that that's something that with age you outgrow. Um, I'm confident in Lamar. I'm confident in Lamar as a football player, as a leader, all the intangibles, how he throws the ball, how he's grown as a player, his maturity level, his work ethic, his leadership, uh, how he runs the ball, how he throws the ball, how he's able to protect himself, his feel in the pocket, his throws downfield with the touch. I mean, I could list a bunch of things that I like about Lamar. So focusing in on the negatives does nobody any good. I mean, of course, Lamar is his har own har harshest critic. You can hear, what do I need to improve in? I need to improve in any everything. That's what he always says. So um, I block out the noise. And to be honest with you, Engraven, when I hear these ridiculous, what I consider ridiculous things say it, said about Lamar, it kind of makes me laugh. Like, all right, man, we'll see. Just wait. You, you wait and see, man, because they've been figuring out Tom Brady. What? He was too old and retiring for 10 years. You know, that's what your 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 questioner was saying there. And uh, you can't stop greatness like Lamar is going to make his plays. Next question came from my guy, Micah. He said, good afternoon. I watch your videos and I love the channel. Appreciate it, man. Actually been rocking with your channel since 2016 when it was you and Raven Space on. Whoa, Raven Space. Whoa. That took me way back because, yeah, I remember Raven Space on YouTube. I, I'm not sure why he stopped. Uh, but anyway, he said, my question was, who do you believe is a better tight end? Todd Heap, Mark Andrews, or Dennis Pitta? So, Jason, out of those three, <laughs> who do you think is the best one? Micah, this is a good one, man. This is mm -hmm. a really good one. Uh, I appreciate the question. Maybe this is my age showing, but I'll take Todd Heap every day of the week. I mean, mm. Todd Heap was a tough, tough dude. Uh, you talk about his blocking and his receiving. I think that he passes. He's up there with Andrews in both, but I would take Todd Heap, the complete player. Uh, it's a shame that he didn't get to work with the quarterbacks that Andrews has, and quite frankly, Dennis Pitta's connection with Flacco. I mean, Todd Heap was hung out to dry in a lot of his games. Yes. A lot of, in a different era in Graven, like they would just – Late yeah, into time. You were allowed to hit back then. Mm -hmm. You were allowed to hit, man. He got his bell rung so many times. He would <laughs> miss a game or questionable for practice. But if you go back and look at his game log, he actually was pretty durable. Like we all remember him as Todd Heap is constantly questionable, but there was a reason for that. We had Jamal Lewis, Todd Heap, and that was pretty much it. And this man carried us to the playoffs. Uh, much respect to Todd Heap. I think they all do. They're all special. It's splitting hairs, but I would say my favorite is Todd Heap. Next question. Well, it looks like a comment came from my guy, Thomas M. He said, Graven, it's been a long time since I sent a question. Get ready for it. Here it comes. All this figuring out Lamar Jackson talk is getting so stale. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Figuring it out and stopping it are two different things. Colin Coward, while defending Lamar Jackson, said, nobody's figuring out Aaron Donald. It sure looked like the Ravens figured out Aaron Donald in that Monday night beatdown that featured five touchdown passes from Lamar Jackson. Aaron Donald was invisible that game. He really was. Uh, look at the success that Tom Brady has had that my guy Jason was just talking about. Uh, Brady was figured out a long time ago. The defense needs exceptional players to create an interior pass rush to force him to move laterally. The defense needs exceptional players to jam the receivers and disrupt the timing. That formula has worked before and enabled some teams with exceptional defenders to knock Tom Brady out of the playoffs. The thing that some people fail to understand is that it's easier said than done. Figuring it out is just something that you can say. Stopping it is something that actually has to be done. There's planning and then there's execution. And neither one is a small feat. And an opponent needs to do both. When people continue to fail to understand this for years, their narrative isn't just stale, it's dumb. It's asinine. Uh, we have really reached a point where some people need to wake up to the fact that the unwarranted disrespect that they continue to pile on this man is ridiculous and shameful. That's the best way that I can put it into words, and I'm curious if you're feeling the same way. What do you think? Thomas, a.k.a. the live stream troll sniper. Yes, he is a mod on the channel. So appreciate you, Thomas. Um... I, man, I don't even have a follow up for that. Yeah, that was yeah nice. I was going to say, man, Thomas pretty much Thomas yeah. pretty much said what we were going to say. And, uh, <laughs> I, you know, I guess what I could add to that is that coaching matters. The play calls matter. You can, I mean, Lamar is going to make the first guy miss, but if there's two or three guys, I mean, he's not Superman. 
Uh, he needs his receivers to catch the ball. He needs some help from the coaches. Uh, there are other factors. Lamar, the, the quarterback is the most important position in sports, bar none. It's like having a starting pitcher that you keep running out there every single game. Imagine if you ran uh, Justin Verlander in his prime out there every every or Pedro Martinez every single game. That's how important a quarterback is. But the quarterback still needs some help. So, so yeah, again, on the Lamar talk, Go ahead and let them talk their stuff. I'll just sit here and enjoy it myself. Shout out to Graven.